something about Seagull. bread or donuts. A bagel. Yep, a uh, bagel. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Good one. I really miss bagels. <laughs> yeah, same. Did, do we have bagels at one point, or was it just no. regular bread? No, definitely none of them counted as no. bagels. I'm probably hallucinating at this point. <laughs> oh, a bagel. <laughs> bagel sandwich. Mm. A good bagel with veggie cream cheese. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's Forrest Gump's Facebook password? And I swear we're not trying to hack in there. Forrest Gump's Facebook password. This one, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know is that it, I'm a big enough. Is it one anyway. Forest one? It is. One yeah. Forest one. Yeah, I'm gonna say this. <laughs> <laughs> nice That's one. <good. laughs> American classic. Yep, I was. Uh, I always like showing pictures of these now, but. I went out to the location where Forrest Gump, like in the movie, when he ran across the country and he just was like in the middle of the desert and he turned around. I was like, I'm going to go home now. Yeah, I was in Monument that exact Valley? spot. Yep. Yeah, I, was I there. went there too and saw that sign. <laughs> it's so cool. There's so many people out there in the middle of like literally nowhere. It's a little scary. Really? When I went there, there was absolutely nobody. And I was like, what's this sign? Yeah. I might have remembered. It was just me and my mom for miles Big on end. Big safe on for in the um, push core just went by. Wait, what? There was like a huge safe on for in the push oh, core. Oh, I thought cam. you said like the push core no. just flew by. And no. I was no. like, excuse no, no. me. Those are secure, but it was like huge. Do we have any samples other than the rock? Um, yeah, couple. there's. We have a C pin, um, two snips of the C pin. In the slurp jars, um, then we have a bamboo coral. Uh, we have a Niskin sample, and that's it in the <laughs> rock. <laughs> it's gonna take forever to process these samples. Yeah, it's gonna be so a lot. Long. We need all hands on deck. <laughs> Leela, do you have any details on the the next and final dive? Uh. Other than that, it will be a little deeper, and that we are aiming for going in at eight. No, not not much. I was not uh, going in at eight. That was the last. Is it? Believe that's the no. plan yeah. for this eight one. Tonight. Yeah. Yeah. How do you know how long it's meant to run? Uh, till sixteen hundred the next day. Okay. It's decent. So Depth will be twenty nine hundred meters. Nice. Oh, that's pretty deep. So will this next dive be our last dive? Yes. Or? No. We came to the end. Sad face. <laughs> Sad face. Yeah, I guess the days are blown by here. Yeah. yeah. Time Don't flies. worry, we still have three and a half days back to Hawaii. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I feel like that's going to be like how it was at the beginning, where it's a bunch of card games and... <laughs> well, <laughs> the beginning was more like everyone was, you know, Trying getting to get used to, know to it. Yeah. Taking Dramamine. Because I know I was. <laughs> Seasick. So I got another riddle for you all. Go for it. This one comes from the chat. It's pretty clever. So why was six afraid of seven? Because, because seven, seven, eight, eight nine. nine. <laughs> I feel like okay. that was like the very That's first yeah. riddle that I heard as a kid. <laughs> yeah, I remember. All right, so... Now here is next, but why did seven eat nine? Uh, I know that one. Because seven needed three square meals a day. Because this square <laughs> of three is nine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little math joke for you. Nerds over here. We're all nerds in here. I know. Hey, I was, um, <laughs> fun fact, in high school, my senior year, uh, I participated in the Power Puff game, um, and it's like where the girls can play football. 
And my name, like for the back of my shirt, was Miss 100 because I had a 100 in math and it was like in <gasps> geometry with tree. Okay, Whoopi. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a flex. Did you win? Um, no, we did not. We got cheated, but it's okay. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> not going to talk about it. Um, it's fine. <laughs> I got injured, so I couldn't even play half the game. <laughs> so, yeah. That sucks. Yeah, yeah, football is a very intense sport. And we're talking about American football for our international audiences. <laughs> yeah, I um, yeah, I got injured bad. It's what okay. happened? Um, this is why I said they were playing dirty. Like, we're not supposed to tackle or anything. And, uh -huh. like, the girl, like, tackled me. <laughs> I was acting like she didn't know that she wasn't supposed to tackle. Ooh. Yeah, so I got tackled, and we're, like, on turf and everything with no pads. <laughs> and she was way bigger than me, so it was like, yeah, there went my leg. Um, I had to wear a boot and everything for my calf muscle. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it was bad. But it's okay. We're here now. <laughs> I'm glad you're okay. Glad you could be with us. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is red and bad for your teeth? What is red and bad? Red? Mm -hmm. Red. Candy? <laughs> I don't know. Cool. Yeah. I was Warm. thinking Jolly Ranchers, but it's actually a brick. Oh. <laughs> 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 that that would be the worst way to oh God. find out what's bad for your teeth. <laughs> so this one's not really a riddle, but actually a genuine question. What internet does a ship use? Well, uh, I can tell you that as far as I know, it comes from a giant golf ball that sits on the top of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we have satellite internet. And I believe it's Viasat. Am I correct on that? I don't, I have no idea, but I do want to say that the International Space Station flew by us last oh, night. Oh, yeah. Speaking of fun, uh, I guess, I don't know where they are. They're past yeah. the atmosphere, right? So they're, they're in space. yeah, the International Space Station is like 250 miles up or something around there. And so I was, I had just been talking about how, you know, if there are no other ships in the area and we're over 250 miles away from from any of the other islands like and Elmira, they're sometimes yeah. the closest ones to us mm -hmm. outside of the ship and then we're like what's that super close looking satellite Fast and we all held thing. up our star apps and it was the international space station so that was very cool that was the first time i've ever seen that me too those were real yeah. cool yep and it's moving pretty fast, about yeah. 17,500 miles per hour. Ooh. And for the life of me, I can't remember the metric conversion for that, but it is faster than fast. But not as fast as me. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised how close it looked. It was mm -hmm. very obvious that it was different. Mm -hmm. And it didn't blink like a plane, so. No. That's true. Yeah, I was enjoying the stars last night, laying on the bench, and next thing you know, the water just splashed all on me and my ear yeah, and everything. I, <laughs> I was like, yep, I'm done. Beautiful stars, time to go inside. Yeah, it got me too. It was a big <laughs> wave. And it was like all that sea breeze and like all the, <laughs> yeah. just all that water coming up, it made my glasses so foggy. I could barely see out of them. <laughs> um, it's the the main events are past now, but I did just want to point out that it's UN World Oceans Day, mm -hmm. and uh, and that there were some really great speakers earlier today. Um, it was from 10 to 1:30 p.m. Uh, East Coast time, but there. The recording is still up on the UN World Oceans Day. Uh, it's unworldoceansday.org website. So um, 
feel free to check that out if you're interested. Um, yeah. Yep, in our website, you can, uh, in honor of World Oceans Day, you can hear from some of our uh, team members and their unique careers in ocean science and how we all came to have a love for the ocean and how we love to protect it. You can see that across our social media as well. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, as well as our live streams being on YouTube. Some of you may be tuning in from there. And when you look on our website, we also have many new blogs and videos up. We have some videos about our whale jaws fossils that we've been finding on the ocean floor, which are very fascinating. And also some of our volcanic rock samples that we've been using our rock cutter on. And that's been one of the most fun experiences on the ship, getting to slice a rock in half like it's a big stick of salami and seeing what's on the inside. And yeah. This is all the work that we've been currently doing out here in the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. So another way to honor World Oceans Day, for those of you who are watching, how would you put in the chat what your favorite thing about the ocean is, and we'll be here to talk about it. So Amber, what's your favorite thing about the ocean? Wow, that's a big question. Um, I mean, I love just our uh, exploration and discovery. Um, I love, I mean, I'm a big geology person also, so mm -hmm. that was a big highlight for me today with just like some amazing looking rock features uh, and uh, using new technology to learn about them also. That's been great. Yeah, that's great to hear. And what about you, Sarah? And that's spelled Sarah with and without an H. What are y'all's favorite things about the ocean? I'm trying to think. So much. Um... I don't know, I guess just knowing that there's so many different things in the ocean that we don't think about, and things in, you know, the deep ocean, the mid-waters, shallow waters, so many different things that we can't even see, you know? Um, yeah, that's like a really vague answer, but yeah, just the diversity and density of organisms I guess when you think well density when you think about how big the oceans are you know my gosh how do I follow this my favorite thing I can't even say my favorite thing because it's like I'll think I found my favorite thing or like whether it's a fish or a certain area or whatever and then the next time we dive again I'm like oh that's my new favorite 
What was that little fish that swam by us the other day? What was all that? Wow. Ooh. Sea pens. Lots of sea pens. It's like a field of sea pens. It a is. little garden. Look at them. They're so small. Go ahead and zoom. Yeah. Some of these penatula maybe. Oh, oh Cophoblemnon. I think they're Cophoblemnon. I know there was a certain one that Steve was looking for, but I don't think it's this I one. I don't think he's looking for this one. You see this one quite a bit. Yeah. So they're going to reset DP? Okay. Yep. We can zoom out, yeah. Oh, just the bow thruster. Never mind. They're just restarting the bow thruster. Is there any chance it could be this? An I think it, or I think it's Cofoblemnon with the way that the uh, here, like you can see this, like the one second. If it ever loads, I know. Maybe it's in the other one. Oh, yeah, this guide has less of it. I'll have to wait on that. So we have about a half an hour left. Oh, I see. Um. Um, okay, I think we are gonna come off bottom early. It looks like I communicated with Dwight a little. Um, so he said, yeah, get any other last samples. They've already tried a core and it didn't go through and mm -hmm. this is very shallow, it looks like here anyway. Um, so I don't think that there are any last samples we would like to collect. Uh, so we can leave bottom now. Okay. I'm just going to get the arm on that, uh, porch sample. And then okay. We'll go. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I guess wait till the ship is The ship stable. is good. Okay. Yep. Just made like a nice S. It did. Gesundheit. <laughs> The uh, this mango arm, 
Um, we've used it in the past kind of as like an aid arm for two two handed <laughs> operations, sort of. Oh, okay. Uh, like there was this one methane hydrate coring, coring tool we had to use one time. I'm sure. I don't know, Michael. During Hanna during a uh, ONC, are there times when you do two arm yeah, jobs too? Not so much anymore. We used to, and then uh, for hanging on the frames and for like holding on the connector. So sometimes now they'll use it to like regrip something. There was a time when we used to use it a lot to mate the 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 the, the subsea connectors that ONC used, the ODI yeah. connectors. But even that was kind of agony so now we actually have a jig on the porch that we just like we put it in the jig so we just do everything with the one arm now but it will be used like it's that's probably the most use it gets but it's ever reduced all right all right come up a few meters there sarah okay There. <laughs> it loaded. I think, like. Okay, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I haven't been on when he's been asking for. All right, is this us coming off? Yep, soft bottom. Okay. I'll go for 18 meters per minute just to start. All right. Uh, try 21 or 22. I don't know, it's just shooting up 23. So we just have one dive after this, right? Yeah, Apparently. isn't that crazy? <laughs> and it's starting very soon. Very yeah. soon, yeah. So this will give us a little, m you a little more time to reset us, a little more time to sample process, whatever. And yeah. maybe the people who didn't get cups down can mm. put cups oh, down. On a deeper yeah. dive, yeah. We should definitely inquire about that. Um, yeah, so slated currently to... I think 20 hundred? Go or 20. That's 8 o'clock p.m. 
uh, Hawaiian Standard Time. And then recover at four, then four tomorrow, the ninth. Video, can you just push past all this stuff? There you go. Thank you. Woohoo! Um, but if anyone has any questions, this is a good time to ask. Or if you have any jokes. Jokes, yeah, we're always <laughs> open to Literally jokes. Literally anything. Daniel is, Daniel's learning more about the laser, and actually he's coming over now, so. Our jokes are coming soon, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Okay, Daniel. Oh wait, Daniel's not on yet. <laughs> so we're off bottom and we are soliciting jokes. That's where we are at. We're soliciting entertainment. Anybody got jokes or riddles? I got a riddle for you. Oh yeah? So yeah. what gets wetter as it dries? Oh, I used to know this one. I was about to say, this is, I feel this like is it's familiar. familiar. Heard. Towel? It is yeah, a towel. Yeah, it's a towel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Drying you off. And yeah. Then, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. We're getting on to you, Daniel. Yeah. What's up? We're getting on to you, Yeah, Daniel. we're starting yeah, to get yeah. the hang <laughs> of it. <laughs> oh, I got some stuff to really stump you. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it on. You just give me one moment to finish the status update. Anybody else got any riddles or jokes? Um, no. <laughs> um. What do you call a seagull that works at a bakery? Mm. Uh, it was like a oh, Chonacops. the one with like little arms. Yeah, yeah, the Chonacops. Yeah, was cool. That was cool. I think that's my new favorite. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I haven't gotten to actually see an anglerfish yet, as we we yeah haven't either on our dives yet. Um, I just like they're but as soon as we do, that'll be my that'll that'll be it for me. <laughs> <laughs> they're little until you see a whale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Their modified fins are just like so wild to me. Like, yep, that's definitely something that could have went on land if it wasn't so deep in the ocean. You know, <laughs> like just one step away from stepping on land and, you know, making that mark in history. So another thing about staring at the uh, big open blue is uh, honestly making me hungry in a way, especially when we see shrimp float by. Those uh, shrimp kebabs we had for lunch are really nice. Oh, those were good. I don't know why they had two sticks in them, though. I guess for stability. Easier flipping. Mm -hmm. Shrimp tacos, that's something I'm looking forward to, getting back to land. <laughs>
So for viewers who are tuning in there, telling us what they love about the ocean, one viewer says, I like the ocean because we really know less about it than we do about space. And the fact that it's harder to explore the deepest parts of the oceans than it is to get out into outer space. So yeah, and the big thing is that 70% of our planet is covered by water, yet we know around roughly 5 to 10% of what's actually down there. So yeah, we're basically in the final frontier down here, exploring places that no one has ever gone before. And a big part of how we're able to do our exploration is the technology we have on our ship. So one of those is uh, our seafloor mapping technology. So Cheyenne, if you're not busy, could you tell us about our uh, sonar technology? Yeah, so basically it works kind of like echolocation. We send out a sound, it bounces back up to us, and we get data on how deep the seafloor is. So when we are moving between dive sites and when we are transiting like to this area, we're sending out pings and we're getting data and then we know what the seafloor looks like. We do, so satellites have mapped the seafloor at a very, very low resolution. So just like the general shape. So we're, so the ships, when we do mapping, we give a much higher resolution than the satellite. So if you go on Google Earth, you can see like a very kind of fuzzy features and the sharper features on Google Earth are things that have actually been mapped by ships and not just satellites. And we also had recent updates actually on the total quantity of seafloor mapped and it's actually now much closer than the last time I had looked at it or thought about it to 25% uh, overall of the whole seafloor, which is wild. Um, and actually within US waters, just in January, it was announced that we have close to 50% of the exclusive economic zone of the US mapped in uh, resolution of 100 meters or, or better, 100 square meters or better. So that is uh, great news and has been um, the, uh, through the effort of many ships and organizations, uh, one of which is Nautilus. Yeah, great to hear it's a, a priority. Yeah. Yeah, so every year, multiple of Nautilus's expeditions are dedicated uh, entirely to mapping, and during our ROV cruises, that's also um, part of the priority for when we're not diving.
Some of you may be wondering how do we uh, fund our expeditions and where it may come from. So, we, Nautilus Live and Ocean Exploration Trust, are a part of a large institution called the uh, Ocean Graphic Exploration Cooperative Institute, and this is supported uh, supports funding uh, from the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric uh, Administration from the United States government. And we work with other institutions, such as the University of Rhode Island, the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, the University of New Hampshire, and the University of Southern Mississippi, among others. We even partner with other institutions, like National Geographic, as well as many educational partners. And it's because of this that we are classified as a nonprofit so that we can do science and exploration without the need to see anything in return, just to put that science and that information out there for the benefit of all humanity. So if you're curious about our work with OACI, you can check out our website, which is web.uri.edu. And that leads to some links that talk about the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute, uh, the work that we do. Through the Institute, we're also able to use uh, onboard Nanos other instruments, such as an autonomous C4 mapper called Drix, and other uh, autonomous vehicles that can also do ocean science without the need of being directly attached to our ship. So Hercules and Atalanta have other uh, instruments out there to do the same work with them. And this allows us to cooperate and develop new technologies to help us explore the oceans. The laser dive pod team, they come from the SETI Institute and Impossible Sensing, and they are our partners on this expedition. So I'd like to take it to the team to, if you can talk about some of your journey to working with uh, OECI and the Ocean Exploration Trust and uh, what it is that uh, your work entails. Loopy, do you want to start as a, an intern, who as an OECI intern? Yeah, um, was it so how was you, the question? How you got to where you are now and uh, what your, you know, really your position is as far as OECI, OET, and, and uh, yeah, what your position entails. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, I never really thought about, like, doing anything in the ocean <laughs> before. Um, uh, it was, like, last year, fall semester. Um, I joined Ocean Exploration Club at Tuskegee University, and uh, this past spring semester we uh, went to go tour Southern um, University of Southern Mississippi's Marine Center, and just really like being like behind the scenes of like their aquarium and just like talking to like all the scientists and networking in general. Um, it just really like opened my eyes to like this is something I see myself doing. Um, so once I got back to campus, um, they started sending out our advisors and stuff for OE, um, started sending out internship opportunities within OECI. And so I applied for maybe three of them <clears throat> within their program and stuff, um, this being one of them. Uh, this is, which, when I was, like, doing the research and everything about these internships, um, being here at Sea with Nautos is, like, the, the one I really wanted, um, compared to all the other ones. And I did apply for, like, other internships for, like, the Nashville Zoo and stuff like that, um, but no, like, I really wanted to be at Sea to get the really feel of it and stuff, and, um, yeah, it was, like, a whole application process, 
Um, and then you have to wait a couple of days and do the whole um, interview process. And during my interview process, I was so nervous, but um, it went well. Um, for the most part, since I already like met most of the advisors from the field trip and stuff, like they already knew me, so they kind of like um, remembered what I like talked to them about on the trip and everything. So it kind of like was like a smooth interview, I would say. Um, so really network and put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so after the interview process, it was like maybe a couple of weeks later when I got the email that um, I got accepted for the internship. Um, but I was unsure of where I was going. So yeah, uh, once I found out I was coming here, it was a lot of tears. <laughs> um, just being able to have this opportunity. So this is like the first part of the internship is being here with Nautilus. Um, and here with Nautilus, I am the data logger. And then after here, I will be going to Rhode Island, um, where I'll just be like an ocean science intern. Well, I'm an ocean science intern here too, but mm -hmm. um, we haven't really quite decided what I'll do in Rhode Island yet. Um, we'll probably either sample the rocks that we collected here on Nautilus, or um, I can start a new project where it will be like more so within communications of me being able to tell my story through science. So. Um, Looking forward to either one. Uh, and then after that, I will be going to Mississippi to the University of Southern Mississippi. And that's where like all of all the interns will get together pretty much. And I'll present my work that I did over the summer. So yeah. Yeah, so Loopy well, is probably interacting with more of the OECI partners yeah. in, in one <laughs> summer span than most of us. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's and like we're so glad that that you applied and were selected and are here with us now. Yeah, so it's been great being here, honestly, and meeting all of you. Uh, I am science manager on this cruise, watch leading on this watch, but um, that means that I oversee the science management team and all the data loggers. One member of that team is Loopy. And then, uh, and then there are two others on our team as well. Paula, who's another ocean science intern, and Chris, who actually is a station manager at Palmyra. Um, so it's really cool to get to have Chris out seeing now uh, the deep sea side of the waters uh, that he works so near to. Um, and yeah, so my role is helping to um, facilitate sampling and to then process those samples uh, and to liaise with scientists on shore and aboard the ship and uh, and also managing some of the data that uh, is generated with respect to those samples and to the dives that we go on and um, and yeah helping to lead watches uh, on 12 to 4 I've been splitting this watch with Dwight the expedition uh, leader so that's my role and I got here by being an ocean science intern like sort of like Loopy, uh, six seasons ago, and have kind of worked my way up to this position since. And it's very exciting that now uh, OET is uh, involved in the OECI. And that has opened the door for a lot of interesting new, um, new exploration and new expeditions uh, in the last few years and, and upcoming. I'm Sarah. I guess the way I got here was a, little, a bit less formal than the others. Um, I was an undergrad at Temple, U Temple University in Philadelphia. There's not really a marine biology presence in Philadelphia. You kind of have to go to like Rutgers or Rowan for that. Um, and I didn't really know that. I didn't know much about ecology or marine science prior to like my sophomore year of college. So I just happened to land in um, the only marine biology and only deep sea ecology lab in the area. And then I got really interested in it. And um, yeah, um, basically Nautilus had an extra spot. So I'm taking that extra spot <laughs> that they had. Um, and it's been wonderful. And I'm so glad that I've, I'm able to see all the organisms that I've been looking at these past couple years um, through research. Um, 
you know, like somewhat as close to in person as you can get without being in a summer in a like Alvin or something like that. Um, yeah, so I'm graduated now, taking a gap year, going to go to grad school, um, and yeah, hopefully more opportunities to go out at sea and possibly more with Nautilus. But yeah, it's been lovely. Yeah, and for those of you who are also maybe graduating seniors in college and or even in high school and looking for something in between, uh, yeah, working with Nautilus is a great way to boost your resume, get a way to see the world, and to explore the world's oceans. So on our website, we have opportunities listed under uh, our About tab and Employment Opportunities, or the Join tab, as well as uh, Education. And there are opportunities for science communication fellows, such as myself, uh, as well as ocean and ex uh, ocean science and engineering internships. These typically open up in the fall, and there are opportunities to, to work on a ship, ranging from uh, C4 mappers to uh, marine biologists and ROV engineers and even video engineers. We also have positions open with our Science Communication Fellowship to formal and informal educators, as well as artists who like to come out at sea. So you can all come in and interpret the ocean and our exploration through any means in your art, such as painting, drawing, photography, even music. So we are welcome to everybody from all fields within STEAM, that's science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And so for me, my pathway to coming aboard the Nautilus was also as a science communication fellow. So uh, I studied geology in college. I went to West Virginia University, graduated last year with a Bachelor of Science. And afterwards, I worked as in, uh, in a national park in Utah called Bryce Canyon National Park. There I was a, also similar to what I'm doing now as an SCF. Uh, doing science communication by interpreting the geology of our park to visitors from all around the world. And it was such a privilege getting to work in a national park in such a natural environment. Um, one of the famous highlights of the, the park is the famous hoodoos. There are these giant orange and white rock spires that stick out of the landscape. And if you ever get a chance to travel there, I highly recommend it, especially getting to see Thor's Hammer, one of my favorite spots. And this experience in science communication was a passion of mine. And uh, when I found out about the Nautilus, I was like, yes, let's go. Any chance that I get to talk about this science while I'm actually getting to be out here to do it is one of my favorite things to do. And travel is also a great thing that I love to do. So if you have an adventurous spirit and you love science and you think that this is a career path for you, there are many avenues into it. So I hope you are all interested and that you still tune in live with us on our dives. And our last one will be tomorrow. For this expedition, we will have more coming up. So our next one leaves. Uh, when does our next expedition leave, Leela? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, there's the, the transit expedition over to um, Canada, where we will then be doing the Ocean Networks Canada expedition after. Um, but they'll be departing on the 15th for that transit. So that'll be the next time that we set sail and, uh, and yeah, head from Hawaii up to Canada near Victoria. And we have expeditions planned until the end of the year. From beginning of m the middle of May, when our expedition started, all the way to and December. We'll exploring places ranging from the Jarvis Island, the uh, Papahanao Makuakea Marine National Monument, as well as transiting across the Pacific from Hawaii to British Columbia and Canada. And other areas of the United States Exclusive Economic Zone. And along the way we'll be testing out technologies from our OECI partners. 
and we'll be exploring unmapped and uncharted waters along the way. So here's a great question from the chat, if anybody knows the answer. Have we ever had any maritime archaeologists join our team, or any who joined in an internship, potentially? Hmm. I haven't been out long enough to have been around during the more archaeological days, but I'm sure that the answer to that question is yes. Uh, especially during Nautilus's earlier days in the Mediterranean. Um, and let's see, maybe even potentially recently for, let me look this up, for some of our um, like sunken cave expeditions off of California. I think on the expedition they were exploring the uh, wreck of the USS Independence. Um, not on the one I was talking about, but I, yeah, I'm sure that, that it's possible that during some of the wreck focused dives there were at least scientists ashore tuning in. Mm -hmm. Oops, he's like he has some siphonophores drifting by. Mm -hmm. Long strings of colonial organisms that drift through the ocean collecting nutrients. Open, what are these? Tinafores. I think. Yep. Looks like it, yeah. So people are often tempted to say they are gelatinous organisms, but they're not uh, not the same as jellyfish. Yeah, they are a whole different phylum, uh, which is like the highest grouping uh, of, of organismal taxono taxonomy. Um, whole different phylum, and they, they have their common name which is comb jelly. jellies, and they have these um, teens, or uh, kind of like paddles along, uh, combs along the four axis axes along the side of their mm -hmm. body, and they look rainbow, like iridescent as they reflect light. Uh, and that's how they get around. They locomote using mm -hmm. those combs. Yeah, it's like iridescent cilia, mm -hmm. and they usually used have used cilia. Yeah. Yeah, they have like eight of them, eight mm -hmm. rows, I believe. Eight per, per yeah within the four sections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although I, often it seems like many more than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to keep everyone's minds occupied, I got another joke for you. So, Let's hear it. why can't a bike stand up by itself? Mm. Is it a bike? Yep. Um, I don't know. I don't know a riddly answer to that. Yeah. <laughs> what? Because it's too tired. Oh. Oh, yeah, it has man. two tires, and yeah. <laughs> it's 
pretty good. Might also have a flat, you know. <laughs> uh. Ooh, a jelly. Real Skyphazoan, most likely. So we are a little over 400 meters to the surface, and along the way, we'll still be answering your questions, but around 100 meters to the surface, we'll turn off our SPO and turn it over to the ROV team to do the ascent. So if you have any last minute questions, please put them in the chat and we'll be here to answer them for you.
and I'm bringing the camera up now. Can we go full wide on the Zeus? All right, at 50. Okay, holding. Yeah. All right, let's deck right control van. Right. Control van, deck go ahead. Here, I'll stop on the winch at 50 meters. At all, stop on the winch, five zero meters. Looks like it cracked in half. Oh. Yeah, it's so, uh, yeah. fragile. It's really fragile. Yeah. Nautilus Bridge, Nautilus Deck. Deck Bridge. All right, uh, captain's on the bridge, yeah? He's replaying. Yeah, copy that, Cap. Uh, permission to proceed and recover Atlanta and Herc. Early to reco uh, recover. So, Van, you copy all that? Yeah, Roger, TJ, just stand by one. Herc's moving out of the box here. Give me one minute, I'll call you back. Roger that, thank you. Deck control van, that's better for us. You can come up when you're ready. Copy that, coming up. Just to confirm, we're uh, moving ahead all the time, yeah? Yes, we are moving ahead at point three knots. Sure, copy.
You want this guy? Uh, yes, that one. Okay. Thrusters going off. Okay, Atlantis secure to the deck, uh, proceeding to recover her. Okay, copy.
Back control van, I'm not sure, but from the back of her, it looks like the lift line is wrapped around a tether there. Yeah, we're just uh, just looking at that there now. Yeah, we're just paying out to take it out from under. All right, pan out. Uh, mind your heads there. Pan out. I'm gonna take that wrap off. Roger, driving out, driving ahead. Okay, even in the hurt. Good copy.
All right, Herc's under the green. Roger. Power secure. 